Welcome to our lesson today on harmonic fusion chords. Why do I call these harmonic fusion chords? I call these harmonic fusion chords to reflect the combination of bass and right hand structures. Let me give you a very simple demonstration of this. When you play as a pianist or keyboardist, you have a note that you may play on the left hand, such as this. And you have notes that you could play on the right hand, such as B and E. Now, if you play them all together, you have a C, a B, and an E. And that gives a major seventh sound but we can build on the basic major seventh sound that you're used to hearing. The basic major seventh sound that you're used to hearing typically consists of notes C, E, G, and B, like this, C, E, G, and B. So that is a pretty straightforward C major 7th. But to make this a little bit more experimental, what we will do is put the C note on the left hand, add a B with the right hand, an E still on the right hand, and a B octave, all on the right hand. So if you play like that, you get this sound. And that is why I call these harmonic fusion, because we combine the left hand and the right hand. There's some harmony going on on the left hand and some harmony going on on the right hand, as opposed to a bland C major seventh, which would sound like. Instead of that, we build like this. Okay, and that's the general idea here. Now, to go a step further, I want you to introduce the ninth note on your left hand such that it sounds like this. And also introduce the fifth note of G. So what you have on the left hand is C, G and D. Now for small hands, this is quite a stretch, but I want you to at least attempt it. C, G, D on the left hand. Then build further on the right hand by adding a B, the seventh note, an E, the third note, and the higher B. So you have a more robust sound than just playing a single C and a C, E, G, B on the right hand. This sounds rather robust. Now, to go a little bit further into the theory, let's journey a little bit more into how this chord shape can help you further in your chord experimentation. Again, it's a left hand with the bass notes C and D and a right hand shape with the notes B, E, B. But we don't stop there. We introduce an expansion to give C, G, D. This is essential 
to understand the foundation of these harmonic fusion chords. This structure is unique in its combination of two notes C, D, and the triad in the right hand. But add in the fifth, which is G, results in a powerful complete chord. This addition creates a fuller and more harmonic rich foundation. The CGD left hand structure now provides a solid base for more complex chord voicings in the right hand. Let's talk about expanding the right hand. In the right hand, you can add various degrees to your chord to create rich harmonies. So let's explore some of these right now. For example, with the hand on the left, playing the C, G, D bass, let's attempt adding a D, G, D on the right hand, and let's check out how that sounds. C, G, and D on the bass, and Let's attempt adding to the mix a D, a G, and a D. A D, a G, and if we could have added a D, it would have sounded pretty rich, but let's try that again on the lower octaves. Now a D, G and D. That sound is rather suspended. You could call this a C suspended second. A very rich sound indeed. If you moved this shape up a whole tone, you would have this. A D, an A, and an E. And if you built on that by taking that same shape on the right hand up, you would get that. And taking it back down, Can you imagine mastering this on every single key, being able to move them up and down chromatically? You would have quite an assortment of possibilities. But let's go into our next one, E, A, E. So we will take that same idea and play a C, G, D, and an E. So think about the possibilities just moving the right hand shape up and down as you have this bass support in it. There are many endless possibilities with this shape. Let's go a step further to something that will sound a little bit way out, and that is the C, G, D, but this time we will use a sharp 4 as the anchor for the right hand. This combination will introduce a major 7th note, but a flat 5 or sharp 4 to give a rather whimsical, airy sound. F sharp, B, check that out.
with the base always being supportive each and every time, it gives you endless possibilities. By using these different right hand degrees in conjunction with the CGD, you can create a diverse range of chords with their own distinctive flavors and emotions. But can you imagine what would happen if you moved the left hand to a C sharp or a D or an E flat or an E? The options are absolutely endless with this shape. So I encourage you to try this shape out in as many forms as possible. This will give you endless options in your chord creation. There are so many things you can do with this shape and I encourage you to try them out over and over again. The C, G, D octave, B, E, B octave chords can be described as a C major ninth, no root, emphasizing the absence of the root note, which can create a sense of mystery and anticipation. The C, G, D octave and D, G, D chord with a suspended fourth in the right hand might be named C7 sus4, evoking a sense of tension and release. But I want to make it clear that I have deliberately omitted the B flat. I have left out the flat 7. The flat 7 gives a rather intriguing sound when you build on the C, G, D with a flat 7 and an F to give the fourth suspension and a B flat on top. And you could move these around by giving the chordals on top additional flavor. Many endless options with the bass there to support. Now, to expand on this fusion idea, you could use this as a supportive structure for any chord on the right hand. Let's take, for example, E augmented. Rather dissonant but it does have its place in music. Let's take, for example, again, an E major seven flat five. Extremely sour and dissonant, but when used correctly, it could work wonders. Now, let's relieve the left hand of this shape and let's use a C on its own as a bass. Now that chord may sound a little bit familiar because this is a great substitution for a C minor when you are on the key of F minor. So on F minor, this is a pivot chord to go back to F minor. You might recognize it. And then F minor. The suspension chord again. or take it up an octave. Extremely sour. And then resolve to F minor.
Adina 13, if you will. So, over the past number of minutes, we have been taking a look at what I call harmonic fusion chords. These harmonic fusion chords give you endless possibilities in your music making. I hope you have found this to be helpful. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time on Harmonic Fusion Chords. Bye for now.